The Greek letter nu, the origin of the Roman letter n, looks a little different in ancient times. This Greek letter was adopted from the Semitic letter nun, around 800 BC. The more ancient forms of this letter appeared slightly different, and around 1500 BC, it was a picture of what appears to be a sprouting seed. But it also looks eerily similar to a sperm cell. Is this just coincidence? Was it possible that ancient peoples knew what a sperm cell looked like? Let me also add that the Hebrew word nun, the name of the Semitic letter, means sun or air, the product of a sperm cell. When he saw them, he ran. The word ran is the Hebrew verb roots. This same verb is also found in this verse. He pulled down and broke in pieces. Here the phrase broke in pieces is the verb roots. So couriers went through the land of Israel and Judah. The word couriers is again the verb roots. The verb roots is derived from the two-letter root rots, which appears only once in the Hebrew Bible, trampling underfoot the pieces of silver. The word pieces is the word rots, and means a fragment, a piece that has been broken away from the whole. In ancient times, broken pieces of pottery were used to write messages and these messages were then carried by runners or couriers to their recipient. Another word derived from rots is the word eretz, meaning earth. Is this a coincidence or could the ancients have possibly known that the earth itself is made up of broken fragments, what we call tectonic plates, just like the fragments of a broken piece of pottery? Interestingly, the Hebrew word Eretz may even be the origin of our word Earth. The Hebrew verb Azan means to weigh out. Weighing and studying and arranging proverbs with great care. The word weighing is the verb Azan. Derived from azan is the word mosen, which is a balance, a device used to weigh objects by placing them on the two scales of the balance. Modern science has determined our balance is created in the inner ear. Related to the word mosen, meaning balance, is the word ozen, meaning the ear. Coincidence? Or did the ancients understand the connection between balance and the ear? Until the modern era, it was thought that space and time were two completely different entities. But in 1905, Albert Einstein developed his special theory of relativity and determined that space and time are joined together creating what has come to be known as the space-time continuum. In the Hebrew language, words that are used for space are also used for time. The Hebrew word epho can mean here in space or now in time. The word kadem can mean east in space or ancient in time. Reshit can mean a summit in space or beginning in time. And there are many other examples. Is this just coincidence? Or did they understand this relationship between the space and time that we've only come to realize in the past century? It is possible 
that the ancient peoples were capable of more scientific advancements than we give them credit for. The famous Baghdad battery is a good example. It was discovered in Iraq in 1936. This 2,000 year old device is capable of creating electricity. Is this drawing from ancient Egypt an image of a light bulb? Discovered in 1901 in a 2,000 year old shipwreck in the Mediterranean Sea is what is called the Antikythera device, which has been found to be an analog computer. And what exactly are these 3,000 year old Egyptian glyphs representing? Coincidence or signs of advanced technology in ancient times? You decide.